Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Alex. I'm the architect for back 4 app And today we are starting a new series of videos that will be a Parse crash course that will show you the fundamentals of Parse from the very basics all the way to the advanced features. So I hope you enjoy it. Today we'll be talking about objects and how to store data. But first you have to create your app and integrate the Parse SDK into your project. So here I am at the back for app website. I'm going to create a new account, choose a password for it. That will take me to the back for app uh, dashboard where I can build a new app. We give it a good name, hit create. It takes a few seconds. And here I am at the parse dashboard. As you can see on the database browser, I have a few classes already created by convenience but I'm going to create new classes from code. So I have to integrate the Parse SDK into my project for that. The easiest way to integrate the Parse SDK into my project is through an PM module. But there are different ways to do that. So if you want to download the, the SDK yourself, you can come to the parseplatform.org website and if you scroll down, you'll see all the SDKs. You can just download the JavaScript uh, uh, SDK or whatever language you're using and integrate it yourself. I myself, I'm going to use NPM, so I can go to my desktop and create a new folder. I can enter that folder and type NPM install parse. As you can see, I have my node modules folder and my package lock.json file. So the SDK is installed, I'm ready to start coding. I can go to my Visual Studio Code and create a new file. I'm going to save that file as index.js inside my parse crash course folder and we can start coding. So I have to instantiate the SDK first. I do that by typing const parse equals require parse slash node because I'm coding node.js. Second thing I have to do is initialize my parse. We do that by typing parse.initialize and I have to pass two arguments to this function. The first is my app ID, which I can retrieve from server settings, core settings, and here's my app ID. And I also need my JavaScript key, which I can get from the same place. If I scroll down, here's my JavaScript key. And I also have to set my server URL. So I do that by typing parse.server URL equals. And the URL for back for app is https parseapi.backforapp.com. Now we are ready to start. Storing data on parse is done by extending a parse object. Each parse object contains key value pairs of JSON compatible data. The data is schemaless, that means you don't need to specify what keys exist. It just sets whatever key pairs you want and we will store it. Uh, keys must be alphanumeric strings and values can be anything that can be JSON encoded. So let's create a subclass called person that will extend my parse object and I'm going to use the same name person. By the way, for classes we use camel case uh, capitalized strings like person here and for objects and, and properties we use uh, lowercase strings. So I'm going to instantiate your object like this. And now I can set some properties. For instance, I 
set a property called name, which will be my name. And I'm going to a property called age, that will be my age. If I call now person.save and if you go back to my terminal and type node index.js that will run I can go back now to my dashboard core database browser and here my, my person class if I enter that class I have my Alex K in name and 38 as age this is the simplest way we can do to store data, but we can go much, much further than that. So, for instance, I can have instance methods, uh, instance properties, and even class methods for a class. So, I'm going to delete all this here, and we are going to make this subclass much more powerful than this. So I can put a comma here and we will have two distinct functions, but we'll, we'll get there. The very first one will have the instance methods and instance properties that I want to my class. So for instance, I can have a instance method called isAdult, which will be a function and that will return this dot get get is what we use to retrieve values from parse I'm going to retrieve my age and if it's greater than 18 then is adult will be true or else it will be false I can also have a instance property for instance I can have a uh, initialize which will be a function as well and have some attributes to it I'm going to set the property for this like has children equal false so every new person I instantiate will have a property called has true children equals false and then we can put a comma here and instantiate some uh, class methods as well so we're going to create a class method called create that will be a function and I'll pass a parameter called uh, living city For that, I'm going to create a new person. And I'm going to set the living city as the parameter I just created. And then I'm going to return that person. Okay, it seems good. Now we can check on the data we just wrote. So I'm going to create a new person. And I'm going to create uh, the class to, I'm going to call the class method I called create for that person. And I'm going to type, uh, it's expecting my living city, so I'm going to put Sao Paulo here. And we can now try to console log that. We can also try to console log the person has children property, which must be false. So if I go back to my console, and type it again. So it seems, oh, I have a typo here. Where is it? Oh, this should be a 
person capitalized because it's from a class. And there you go. But if I go back to my console and refresh it, you see that person didn't show up here. And why is that? That's because I didn't call the save method for it. So let's give it a good name for this person. And call my person to.save method here. You can call it again. And if I come back to my parse dashboard and refresh it, here is my second person. I didn't specify any age for that. And there you go. Okay, guys, this is all we had for today. And I hope to see you back on the new videos that will be coming out. Hope you enjoyed and see you soon. Bye bye.